Hi, I'm Louise Dearman. I'm Rachel Tucker. And you are watching Sugarscape. <laughs> Weirdly, if there's someone famous in the audience, I get nervous, yeah. and I can't figure that one out. I think, why am I getting nervous? I They're know. watching. I guess it's kind of if you, if they're an idol of yours, or like recently we had Brown Prince, Brown Prince, Brown Prince yeah, Jolie. Like I mean, hello, they're Hollywood royalty. Yeah. So everyone was like up in the ante, trying to impress. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I started dancing when I was three, and then around the age of about. 12 or 13, I guess. <laughs> I'm still trying. <laughs> and I wanted to be a dancer up until I was about 12 or 13. Then I decided um, I wanted singing lessons and found I could sing, and, and then it progressed from there. And then it's just been my entire life, I guess. I went to college when I was 16, trained at Lane Theatre Arts for three years, and then you're thrown out into the world of showbiz. Well, I'm slightly different, but um, again, from a very young age, I've always been singing, dancing and acting. It's been in the family. I've sang clubs and pubs with my father, cabaret from when I was about nine. Did shows, amateur, um, you know, always doing stuff around Belfast, uh, where I'm from. And then um, came to London, trained, went to the Royal Academy of Music and got an agent and toured the UK. And, and then got a little help with the program that I did. I'd do anything. That always helps. A little, um, a little push, and that's kind of um, probably got me where I am now. Um, and it was an amazing experience. Now, actually, if I could sing it, yes, of course I would. But I couldn't sing it. I don't. I don't have the range. It's not. I don't have that soprano. I'd love to have a go. I she could probably. Um, <laughs> it, the, the, the thing that I that always astounds me is about Rachel is that how she does it eight times a week. When you um, first start in the show and you're rehearsing and, and you you're in the rehearsal situation, you're singing these huge songs that are you know that everybody knows and loves. It, it's incredible. But like Rachel said, eight shows a week. It's um, I, I guess you have to remain in the story. Mm and the entire journey of the story of Wicked. And in that sense, those moments, those pop-out moments of those huge songs are still part of the story. So for us, we're still just trying to get that across A to journey. the audience. Yeah. And um, if, if we completely focus just on those big songs, yeah. then... Then it, we're not doing it right. Yeah, we wouldn't be doing it right. It has to be a, a whole part of the character that's of the right. story. So and we, we need to keep it, that's when I would say focus, keeping it yeah. real the whole way through. And using the big songs mm. as part of the journey as opposed to them being like a pop number, you mm. know, here's to find gravity or here's yeah. we don't think of And another like time it's more about how you're acting the song than just simply singing yeah. it like you were in a concert situation. Yeah. It's, um, and I think that's why people are so moved as well by lots of the music in yeah. Wicked is because of what the, the story that it's telling as well as the amazing build yeah. in the music. It's, yeah. it's all those elements that create such a powerful moment. Mm. 